I'm Shah from Sega Europe and joining us today for one of our 60th anniversary chats are the wonderful Mark Webley and Gary Carr from Two Point Studios. So Mark and Gary are two of the three co-founders of Two Point Studios and between them have a legacy of great titles from across the years under their belts, including genre defining classics like Fable, Black and White, Populous and Theme Park. Mark and Gary worked together at legendary developer Bullfrog, eventually united working together in simulation classics that have gone on to be remembered as some of the best sim management games in history. Mark later went on to co-found Lionhead with Peter Molyneux, while Gary co-founded Muckyfoot, where he worked on games like Urban Chaos and Startopia. Eventually, they were reunited at Lionhead, and when the studio closed in 2016, out of the ashes sprung Two Point Studios. In 2018, they released Two Point Hospital, and since then, it's been onwards and upwards. But let's hear from the guys themselves. So, about Two Point, guys. Welcome. Thank you. Hiya. Hiya. Can you give us a bit about your background in games first and kind of what eventually led you to found Two Point Studios? Mm. You start up first, Mark. <laughs> Go on. Uh, okay. Um, <clears throat> I, uh, I started in 1985, um, a studio called Palace Software back in the 80s. And we did um, uh, platform games and uh, fighting games. I did a game called Barbarian, which was a hack and slash game in the 80s. And then I joined um, Peter Molyneux at Bullfrog in 89. And I started working on uh, their early games when there was only six of us in an attic room. Um, worked on the Populous games and um, Powermongers and later on worked with Mark on the theme games. And, that, and we went on from there. And that's that's kind of where uh, G- Gary and I met. In fact, I first met Gary uh, in this attic, horrible place that they were working. And I was kind of uh, I was meeting Peter, and this very scary-looking Mohican guy, punk, walked down the stairs. And I thought, shit! Uh, oh, I can't swear, but I thought, ooh. And uh, that anymore. later on, later on, I kind of uh, got to know Gary, and he, he's very sweet, and he, he wasn't at all scary. But we worked together on uh, a number of things, and especially it was um, the hospital, which is kind of our project. Bullfrog was a, a pretty cool place. Um, there's a number of different projects going on, and we have kind of left our own devices with um, the sequel to Theme Park, which I'd kind of uh, worked on uh, in, in a number of ways. Uh, in fact, Theme Park was the thing that caused Gary to leave Bullfrog as a... Um, uh, he thought it was a bit cutesy and there's not enough killing in it. So uh, he went away, learned his lesson, and then came back to work on what he thought was Dungeon Keeper, a very cool dungeon game. And in fact, he was working on the hospital game with him. So punishment for him, really. Amazing. I just so, yeah. so I want to see, yeah, wanna that, see this mohawk where, now. Go ahead, Charles, say again. I was just going to say, I just want to see this mohawk now. Um, I can send you a picture. Don't worry. Please. I'll, I'll I'll be slightly looking on my phone for a picture while you're in, doing your interview. So if I'm looking down occasionally, that's because I'm looking through my old photographs. <laughs> so that's that's where the seed of Two Point really came from. Gary and I were working together on um, Theme Hospital. We had a bunch of ideas like Theme Prison, Theme Resort. We kind of thought we'll carry on this designer series and. We'd had a, we had a good little team. There's probably only four or five of us. Uh, and you know, that was the plans next. And um, things happened. I went off to Lionhead. Gary went off to Mucky Foot. And um, we kept meeting up with each other and saying, oh, we should do that one day. And never maybe really thinking it would ever happen. But um, it did happen. And uh, that's where Two Point came from. Those, yeah, those so- games have always been... A passion of ours. I mean, even though Fable was amazing, and we loved Fable when when that was, you know, pretty much what took over Lionhead. I think we always wanted to go back to making those god games, those sim games, which um, are just charming. The movies, uh, more more the little people kind of simmy yeah. game. Gary was um, your studio head there, and I was kind of uh, um, running the design team on that. With, in fact, Ben Huskins, who's kind of uh, our lead designer now. So it's, um, I mean, the important thing for us for Two Point was 
find an amazing team and and just work on stuff that we were passionate about and really that was it it was just stuff that we kind of felt it'd be great to come to work and every day and do and you know I think that's kind of been exactly what two point has been as well it's, it's been amazing to kind of go let's do this and and it kind of worked that's great i mean the whole the whole two point studios looks like just an amazing place to kind of make games and it's always fun to have you guys come and visit us mm. but what is it about the studio that makes it such a great place to work other than kind of like all this creative freedom that you obviously have with two point but the, the advantage of having mark and myself at the helm is we've made all our mistakes um <laughs> and we've known when it's been um not fun places to work in the past. We've, we've been, we've had to be the bad guys in the past sometimes when you run big studios, there's always that inevitability of making wrong decisions and learning from your mistakes. So at two point, I think it was meant to be something where we just took a little bit of pressure off ourselves. It wasn't about necessarily being the most professional company or trying to be the most ambitious company or being the most successful company. It was about being a place where we actually want to go. And, and through that, <clears throat> I think the byproducts of that is people are quite happy to be there and, and, and great things happen. Because in the early days of Bullfrog in particular, where we had a shared experience in the very early days when it was a small team, we weren't that professional. We weren't that planned. We weren't that strategical. And we weren't, but I mean, we got things done and yeah, you know, yeah. we didn't have anything like a producer or we didn't have anything called a designer, but between us, we kind of produced and managed uh, the game and I think that's kind of an important part of you know what what's good people own their their, their bits you know if the art guys own the art you know we talk a lot uh, and I think having an amazing team that we've kind of handpicked uh, I guess you always handpick a team but we kind of set out to go these are the people we want and we've we've managed to get uh, a lot of them and they work well together they know what they're good at. Uh, we know what they're good at. And again, we know what we're good at and what we're not good at. So I think it's it's a team that kind of really works well together. And as, as Gary said, to, you know, uh, yeah, we've kind of worked with teams for a long time and, and kind of Gary especially is really good at sort of building teams and kind of, uh, uh, I guess, I've often been the bad cop uh, and he's been the good cop and... No, he's just the bad cop all the time. <laughs> but it's true. I, th I, I do think. I do think the. I mean, obviously, you know, we have we take what we do seriously, but just letting people express themselves and not just relying on individuals to to carry that burden of responsibility, as in a, a small group of people, I think is important. So I think the skill has been picking the right team and allowing people to express themselves with that. You know, obviously, we we. Is a guide rail there, but we don't want to overly impose, you know, our individual opinions all the time because that just limits the potential of the idea. Generally speaking, the fights we have, which are really creative fights, we get to the right conclusion by just listening to everybody. If you listen to everybody, common sense prevails usually, and you get to the best ideas. So uh, it's been it's been a real exciting three or four years for us to actually sort of enjoy the, the creative process and to make something again where we're just really passionate you know we really are passionate about making these little people games so um it's, it's just a pleasure to come into the office to be honest well when we used to go into the office now we mm -hmm. log on every morning no it's lovely do you know logging into zoom every morning <laughs> <laughs> seeing everyone's wonderful faces yeah it, it sounds like teamwork and you know working together is a really big thing at two point um studios you guys recently joined Sega. Um, could you tell us why you thought we were the best fit for Two Point and how has it been working closely with Sega in general? Yeah, I mean, we'd worked with Sega obviously from day one. I mean, Gary and I um, and Ben were kind of, we had the idea probably for a whole year before we actually uh, managed to get a deal. So we kind of, putting docs together, presentations. And of course, Gary and I had done a lot as part of Microsoft. And so we, I think we had a pretty good uh, deck and a pretty good presentation. Uh, and 
we we'd rehearsed it uh, a lot we had a sort of business plan we kind of knew what we wanted to be we kind of had a franchise view and and we kind of went on the road um and so went to speak to a lot of quite small publishers um and you know some medium-sized publishers and i think it, we weren't after a huge amount of money to make the game but um you know we thought somebody like sega wouldn't be interested in in, in what we were doing uh, until we got introduced to them and gary you can talk yeah about- i mean i think there was a there was a serendipitous moment where both sega i think were looking for someone like us and we were looking for someone who would believe in us at the same time and it, it really was uh, a wonderful kind of coming together and it happened quite quickly once we sort of did meet Sega um, you know and, and there was a lot of I think um, credit to Sega to, to trust us mm. because um, probably if they lived there uh, the time again and now you know maybe it wouldn't be that easy to sort of invest so much trust but I, and that really was important to us because we didn't have a big team. We didn't have a lot of, you know, uh, technology up and running and ready. We just had a lot of experience and a lot of passion to make this. And, you know, kudos to, to, to Sega for actually committing to it. I think if they have a tick box now of developers to sign, we probably wouldn't make the cut because, um, you know, we didn't have uh, all that stuff in place. So, um and that's why I think we've always been fairly um, loyal to Sega. Um, even afterwards, when we had the success, there was an opportunity, you know, to, to speak to a number of people. But we actually wanted to, Sega to, we were, we were backing Sega to sort of come through and and, um, and, and be, the, be the partner and, and us become part of the studio. Because we, I think we owed each other that, really. We owed yeah, each other. And it had been a really good two years. I mean, the way Sega work is the way I think a lot of publishers say they were but in fact Sega does work like that so the studio is is the key bit and what you might think is the publisher is is the service organization and so if we needed something we could ask uh you know Sega uh, using you guys for instance is kind of we don't necessarily have those things when you're starting up and there's a lot of stuff that Sega could go well, if you want it it's here uh, if you if you want to do it yourself, then do it yourself, and that was great for us because I mean Gary and I and and Ben we make games, but we're not we didn't know about marketing, we didn't know about digital uh, distribution really from where we were coming from from the, the Microsoft days, um, so it was important to have all that, and uh, you know we kind of felt we knew Sega well enough that we could trust them, and uh, not that they're a devil, but end of the devil you know perhaps well i think they're an honest publisher as well i'm not saying other publishers aren't honest a devil, aren't you gary <laughs> i just i just like the way that they're very transparent about you know if you know should we do this should we do that is this the right thing to do you know we made some mistakes here and there and i think i like that i like that honest approach and um you just feel that you're, you're at the table and you're helping if you like point the ship in a certain direction it doesn't feel like there's this kind of power struggle at the top and people are just trying to be very confident in their own ability to sort of back up their position Sega seems to come across as a a group of people who are all working together and that that reminds me a little bit of two point two point kind of don't have those kind of you know layers of authority there there is a hierarchy but there aren't any sort of like alpha people that are kind of going yeah, they're trying to vie for a, a more senior position. It's kind of say it is like you know, we've got one goal and it's working together. In fact, part of uh, Gary, mine, and Ben's sort of uh, decision process was actually visiting all the studios like SI, CA, and um, Amplitude, um, and it was great to kind of meet those guys. Amplitude, especially, kind of well, before us, were newly acquired and just kind of learning what life's like under Sega and um and that was that was good and, and there's you know there's some real wisdom there amongst the, amongst those yeah. teams and it's great to kind of be able to you know use it life. doesn't feel like that it feels a healthy competition but it's it is really, it really does feel like if we've got issues we can ask advice from all the other um studios and they're willing to help and more than willing to help you know 
I forgot to mention Relic there. We didn't go see Relic because they were in Canada and probably wasn't in our budget at the time. But <laughs> again, another fantastic studio, which has had amazing times and, and some tough times. And all those people just share their experiences, which really helps us grow up. I think it's evident that everyone, like, I don't like to use the term like family, but, you know, it's because it's really cliche. But I think it's evident that, you know, Sega and all of the other um, developers that work with us are effectively a bigger family. You know, we mm. don't we love working with you guys and we we absolutely love having obviously you within within our folds. Mm. Um, I'm going to I'm going to flip the questions kind no, of on the head now, if you want, and uh, make it a little bit more lighthearted. OK, go for it. <laughs> So obviously, you guys have a very strong background in management sims. Um, so it's obvious why Two Point Hospital was, you know, the genre that you went for. But what firstly inspired you to create a hospital sim? And were you thinking of any other other games originally? Or was it just, I want to make Two Point Hospital? Difficult one to start. I mean, it's an obvious <laughs> starting point for Mark and myself because we had some unfinished business um, um, from a game that we made 20 odd years ago. Um, and also we, we felt that that particular game still had something to say in today, mm. in today's gaming society. I mean, it, it was still, it's still being played today and, and it, it's virtually the same game. So we had a bunch of things that, were in our heads and had been in our heads for 20 odd years. So we had to get that out of our heads. I think that's fair to say, Mark. With the first yeah, and that's right. And I, I think it was getting something launched and off, off the ground is, is really hard. I mean, as an indie studio and you're kind of trying to get a deal, you're living off your own, your own money and you're, you're kind of thinking, okay, well, we need a team. You, you've got to come up with something that, that people go, okay, we trust you. And it, I think it was an idea that we felt people could trust us with. I mean, there is a whole bunch of games. There is a whole bunch of games that are going to be Two Point County that I think uh, you know, we're embarking on at the moment. And um, just just bringing out that vision, I think Two, two Point Hospital was, was a good one to start with because I think, um, as Gary said, there was there's a lot of ideas. And bringing on the... A, a brilliant team that hadn't actually worked on uh, any sort of hospital team in the past was was pretty cool because you kind of got new ideas. There's some new guys on the team, I mean, younger guys. So just having uh, just a mix of people making uh, a hospital inspired game. But but the important thing is it's 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 just about running a business. It's not necessarily about running a hospital. It's about um, people have done hospital games before. And I think the important thing was, was getting the balance right to you, the sense of humor, not taking itself too seriously, something that was easily accessible that you can kind of look at and go, oh, this, I can, I can play this. And then -da, you're hooked on a, a management sim, which you might go, no way uh, am I going to play a management sim because they're, they're dull. And I, I think, and then having that depth that you can kind of go, okay, I've mastered the the basics, but if I really want to sort of um, do well, and I think just twenty years of, of of making different games has kind of just helped us become better and, and more learned about uh, what kind of things um, would be good to to to, to mm. use. Games. Totally agree with Mark there. I mean, I was, I was actually going to say the same thing in the sense that the actual subject matter isn't as critical in our opinion, we could be wrong, uh, to, to what made, made it work. It, it, it's, it's a wrapper, um, but there has to be some kind of relatability definitely to Mark's point, but really, you know, and Mark's, Mark's example is often, it could be a paper box factory. It could be, it, it really it, it isn't, I mean, hospitals aren't a sexy subject. They're not, you know, this isn't, you know, dystopian future or, you know, deep space or, you know, Wild West or anything like that. This is actually quite a mundane subject. So it just, in fact, that's, as I keep saying, we keep saying, the more mundane the subject, usually the more we can spin it into something more interesting. So um, 
yeah, I, I, uh, it wasn't the the necessarily the the only idea we had. We had a bunch of ideas, but it definitely felt like um, our starting point, an obvious start, a, a good a good way to kind of um, kick off Two Point Studios. I think I can speak for everyone that's touched Two Point Hospital. The it's been done really well, and this is not me being biased because I work at Sega. This is me going. It's just fun. It's like, like you said, you know, I wouldn't go, oh, I want to play management sim today, but I've ended up putting God knows how many hours into, into Two Point Hospital. And I think one of the reasons why it's kind of kept me personally really interested is just because of all the really weird illnesses that you guys have in the game. Like, how, how do you come up with those? Is it you guys just sit at the table and go, today we're going to have lightheadedness or... Well... It- that, that, that's, that's the thing about the team is is the ideas for the illnesses have come from all different mm. places. And what's made some of them work has been, uh, it's just come from a completely different place. And in fact, I think Bulbous Head was the first. Oh, Mark's <laughs> idea initially. It was yeah. Bulbous Head because it was a bulb. But then Mark looks at the idea and said, it's like headedness a little bit more punny and a bit more interesting and we get yeah that's the one so it's that combination nobody owns an idea no one owns it and then gets precious no and in fact one of the ones that i i thought was rubbish for ages was uh emperor's new clothes which is person thinks they've got clothes on and uh and they're just walking around to the hospital i i said and i was getting that's really cheap and uh, that's really rubbish and uh until chris got on with the animations and then you got people going oh and then sort of like stretching touching <laughs> their toes and it's it just that's what made it work and it's you know it just comes together so i think the great thing about having a small studio and all being in the same office like we aren't anymore it's just that those kind of ideas you can kind of go oh what about this or you know just shouting ideas across or, or talking about ideas and and anyone can kind of go yeah that's cool I mean nobody has an office um we've got room offices for meeting rooms but we all sit in an open plan office because we want that kind of actually it goes back to Peter Peter was Peter Molly yeah. was very good at instilling that mm. we should all be together and I think that kind of carried on into you know what Mark thinks and what I think I think it is important to to not well, look, other studios will have their way. That's absolutely yeah. down, down to their way. But for our way, it feels like um, it, 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 it opens you out to, to, you can hear things, you can see things, and that really mm. works for us. In and, big, and, big and teams, it's very difficult. Sorry, Sorry, Gary, come on. I was just going to say, in big teams, it is difficult. And I think one of the things I was trying to allude to earlier is when I've been in, in control creatively of larger teams, I've been more dictatorial. Naturally, it's difficult to be this if you're like open to an organic process, it just is. So, you know, when Mark and I talked to Sega, we talked about saying staying small and beautifully formed. And and that's what we're saying. We just want to be able to keep getting away with involving as many people in this process as possible. And I suppose there's a point of critical mass where you can't do that. But right now we're benefiting from the fact that any idea can, can be created by somebody and it can be then taken into the team and embellished. And I think that's what makes the charm come together. You know, it's not just one person saying, go and make this. It's not a sausage factory approach. Yeah, and and, and to that point, it, it is also what we like doing. And I think what the, you know, the team like doing as well. And I think as you know, when you're making a labor of love, you have to love it and you have to love coming to work and it's not a slog. So having an environment where people feel valued and people are valued because they're actually adding to this this thing you're making uh it's 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 really important so you know this is the way we wanted to do it and and you know actually feel like we're actually part of making the game um and 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 that's that's the way it'll stay (laughs) i think it really comes across in the game to be honest that people are having fun i think it's I think it can be sometimes the it's obvious that you know there were issues during the development or something but I think everything about two point is just so two point hospital should I say um it's just so light-hearted but the studio as well is like really light-hearted and every time we see you guys it's always fun 
Um, we always have a laugh. Um, but we can't talk about illnesses previously without asking you guys, what is your favorite one? Do okay. you have a favorite illness or a favorite cure machine or something silly that mm. you just really, you know, this is the one? Mm. I know mine. So you got yours, Mark? Yeah, I know mine as well. And it's, it's <laughs> the one I mentioned earlier, which is the Empress New Clothes. I just think that's just so simple and just so funny as well. So it went from your least favorite to your most favorite. Oh, I don't know about least favorite. I also I like the the uh, the uh, mock star as well, which I just I like that one. Those animations and the, the character is just just great. We need to do some more mock stars, don't we? Yeah, Who's definitely. Um, but my most favorite is animal magnetism because I think it started with a pun, um, which is the classic kind of. It doesn't always work that way. We don't always just make up a, a, a funny name and that works as a, an illness. But when it does, it's great. And I just think the art and animation team took it another level with the, the little creatures just, you know, moving around and just the way they're actually disposed of is, is great. So that's my favourite one. My least favourite, I don't know. Uh, hmm. the, one I'm, the one I'm disappointed about is the one that I don't think is used enough. I'm going to put it that way. I'd like to see more mummifications in the game. They, they tend to, I think we've underused them. Um, and it's a great, it's a great looking, um, you know, character sort of, you know, walking around the place. And I love the way we actually remove the bandages. So underused, I'll say, rather than my least favourite. I think mummifications, like one of my favourites. Yeah, so yeah. You, you've got that one at least. Yeah. yeah. So the game... Mm -hmm. I think with the uh, animal magnetism, we missed a trick when the uh, the animals get squirted against the wall. There is meant to be blood running down, but <laughs> no. the guys wouldn't put it in. Just a little squeak is more than enough. Are you rating for that? Yeah. Oh dear. So the game has evolved so much since launch yeah. with so many updates, so many DLCs. Did you expect the game to be doing so strongly two years after launch? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. What we wanted to do is what we used to do is, uh, no, it's not what we wanted to do, that's not right. We, we used to make games and that was it. You'd make a game, but now the world has changed. This is what Mark was talking about earlier about, you know, games now evolve, they develop, they're, they're live, they're a service, they're a continued development. So we didn't really finish. And, and you're right, we have done a lot of stuff. You know, we are only, you know, roughly four years old as a studio. And about four years, that has mean literally nothing to where we are today. And to release, you know, we're about to release our fifth big piece of content. We've also released smaller pieces of premium content as well. We've done numerous updates, added, you know, sandbox mode, added some new functionality so people can cut and paste and... People can add, you know, costumes and all sorts of things into, into them. They can really customise the game now. And that's just come from a team of, you know, between, well, probably about 14 to 25 people. Mm -hmm. um, that's amazing. Um, so it's been a real crazy couple of years. Um, it's been amazing, really, to, to, to kind of not have to go, that's it, we're done, and just having the opportunity to kind of go, oh, this would be cool, this would be cool. And I, I think having a community as well as Gary said these are not things that we were so close to before but actually having a community of people that are going oh we want this or we want that and just going actually that's quite a cool idea or within the team just going oh, here's some really cool things that we can do uh, to make it better and you know, when you're playing the game a lot as, as as we do you kind of go yeah this this is annoying and or th th we can make this a bit better and it's great to have that opportunity to do that and I think the fact that we're two years on and, you know, it's still doing well enough for us to kind of keep nurturing it is, is fantastic. And Gary says about the fifth piece, piece of DLC coming out, and I guess by the time this comes out, we'll have announced it. But then, you know, plans to kind of keep going with this is, um, is quite exciting. And I think there's some really interesting ideas in the pipeline as well. It's funny how much with this extra DLC we've done, how little healthcare has to do with anything <laughs> it just seems to me it doesn't matter um we've just we're going we've gone into some strange different 
subjects and topics that now it, it doesn't matter um, necessarily how much of it is to do with healthcare. It, it, and I love that surreal twist. So I think it'd be very easy just to paint ourselves into a corner and go, mm. does it, does it, what's this got to do with, you know, mm. healthcare? Um, the truth is none of it has much to do with healthcare, really. It's just about nurturing people, helping people, dealing with challenges and objectives and running a, running the, the, the business of, of the game. And, and, and right now, healthcare is it's just, I suppose, at its heart, but really it's going off in so many different tangents. It's, it's, mm. it's out there, really. So, like we've just said, you know, Two Point has obviously, Two Point Hospital, I keep saying Two Point, it's like you've got Two Point Studios and Two Point Hospital. I mean, Two Point Hospital has obviously come such a long way and I guess in a way kind of exceeded expectations. But is it safe to assume that we'll be seeing another game in the Two Point universe? Oh, I hope so. Oh, they wasted their time buying the studio, really. Um, <laughs> Yes, well, yes, we, we, we're about to uh, announce later, um, early next year now, um, our next idea. Obviously, within the Sega family, you'll know about that, but I, I suppose I'll, I'll be professional and, and, and <laughs> keep, that, keep, keep uh, that under wraps at the moment. But the, team that, the team's working hard on that right now. That is, that is our main focus. We have great support from Hardlight, which we haven't uh, really done a... a, a check in with on this talk but um you know they've been great with helping us with our continued development of hospital we've got and andy barton now who that's his sole focus uh, he's in charge of that now mark and i have kind of had to move on to the next thing and, and if you like hand the reins over to a trusted um uh, colleague and, and and andy worked with mark and i for many 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 years at Linehead, and he knows exactly what we expect from from uh, you know we still we still get to play all the of course we do we're still involved yeah. in today you know I'm, I'm still sort of chirping yeah. away at it but obviously we need to clearly evolve into some something new and and that's what we're we're doing right now so you know Mark's busy with Ben on the design work and that's coming together really well I'm really excited with where we're taking our next game because I think. It'd be easy just to re reskin something we've already done, put it in a different subject matter. But we know from our experience that there are certainly some cool features that we were unable to do in hospital, but we know would actually embellish and bring more people into into two point games. So there's two two features that I, I won't talk about, but we're really excited are going to really make our next two point game, you know, up another level. Yeah. I think the principles are kind of the same, so I have something which is relatable. You kind of understand, you know, how, how, how do you run uh, a, this kind of business? You kind of, even if you don't know, you can kind of guess roughly how, how you do it. And I think that's more important. So relatable idea, something that's accessible in terms of being able to get in and play it, and, uh, but lots of depth. And, and, and for us, it's, it's about getting something playable really, really quickly, uh, however long the cycle is, something we can play, and then just keep layering polish and love and, and uh, you know, veneer on, onto it and as, as we kind of just keep playing it and reiterating on, on those systems we've got. And I think that's kind of what we've often done in the past, um, and it, I think it kind of works, and I think being able to play something super early, however hideous it might look or however hideous it might play, it's still at least you can go, yeah, I get this. And I can kind of, this is rubbish. Let's change that. And yeah, so that's what we're doing at the moment. Well, I think I can speak for a lot of us to say that we're very excited to see what next comes mm -hmm. out of Two mm -hmm. Point Studios. Um, we spoke about Two Point County really briefly earlier um, and you've spoken about it in in the past um, what's your vision for building out an entire world of two point like you you looking to really expand out two point county mark do you want to go first or, or... no you can go first okay well we, we always we always really pitched our vision of county uh, before we even used the word county to be honest i think that sort of came along after the fact but we talked about uh, the Simpsons being uh, just the nearest thing we could think of of what we wanted to do that you know Simpsons is about Bart Simpson and it's about Homer Simpson and the, 
and imagine that and the rest of the family but actually it's also about Mo's bar it's also about the school it's also about the community church and it's about you know the, the industrial plan and it, that's kind of the analogy we, we spoke about when we talked about imagine building a, a world of, of sim sim simulated games that live in the equivalent of a Springfield you know so one episode could be about you're at Mo's bar but then if you want to play games you might jump into another idea we've got but actually somehow there's a connection there and that connection can be the common law of the world it could be shared humor it could be characters it can be that you know that you understand if you play one of our games that these characters are also available in other games and just a real connected um uh you know rather than individual games that you pick out and play somehow the stories follow through and it, it feels uh, coherent and, um, and any other opportunities down the line that we can keep that connectivity even stronger through maybe some kind of game experience, then, then great. But actually, just first and foremost, it's a, it's a coherent world where uh, our games live and people will hopefully grow to love that. And, and, and if they've enjoyed this game, they may want to go over and see what it's like in, in one of our other games rather than feel of them, think of them as separate, complete, distinct things. And I think when we set up the studio, that was the idea of a place where our games existed, what was important. And again, what we'd said was, this is this is all we're going to do. We're not going to be making a game like this. We're going to make little sim, little people games. And that's kind of what the studio is built to do. Um, we're still loving it, so we're going to keep doing it. So, um, And hopefully people will still enjoy playing it and um, playing them well i think i think that really cleanly cleanly wraps up the two point segment Ooh. um but as as you may or may not know we are interviewing multiple people throughout sega uh yeah. we have a few questions for you that are sega related considering it's for the sega 60th anniversary Ooh. um as well, whether we like sonic or not <laughs> it's not no that's that's fine but we hope you do. I think sure. from a personal level, rather than uh, a you're part of the Sega family level, what was your first memory of Sega as a company? Mm. Ah. Difficult questions, anyway, right? No, I have a strong memory of... Um, it's, it's not my first memory, but it's my strongest memory. Mm. That's a fair. That's so we, fair. we were back... Uh, at Bullfrog were acquired back in 1995 mark so that's uh, it. yeah that's right yeah uh, by ea and ea were partnering with back then the mega drive the mega uh, and and mm -hmm. sega had a partnership to have ea games on the their platform so one of the things we got uh, as being acquired was we all got a mega drive which was great so we all got these uh, shiny new consoles which were fantastic this is you know there was no such thing as ps1s and xbox back then mega drive was the the the, the, the best bit of kit on the marketplace other than the snes snes i had a snes too um but actually i think mega drive out. had the range <laughs> of games it really did and we we had um all the the sort of um first party titles from from sega came in so yeah. we had, you know obviously i think back then it might have been sonic the hedgehog 2 um, which I played to death, um, Echo the Dolphin, uh, you know, a bunch of these sort of like uh, fantastic games. Uh, but so that was my memory, was enjoying playing playing those games. And also, because I'm from the seaside, earlier than that, I used to play a lot of Sega arcade games. Um, so I, that, that's my earliest memory, is probably playing Sega as, an, as a coin-op um, maker. Yeah, um, me too, as well. I think my... my arcade days uh predate any sort of home computers uh that i had so yeah down in folkestone the the rotunda which doesn't exist anymore was just tons of arcade machines it's a seaside town like gary uh and that yeah that's probably my first memories of sega and then more real as a company with gary uh when we did uh when we were doing some research on you know what's what's a hospital like and then realizing that they're really really boring um we actually got a chance to go around frimley uh and uh they were great uh, to us showed us all that stuff and then we were able to sort of give 
them a, a mega drive and like loads of games for the kids wards which was um that was nice wasn't it yeah they were really chuffed with that oh, that's of course outrun we all played outrun to death in the pubs <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. i did so much drink driving in those days on outrun yeah we'd come off outrun not drink driving but you'd... <laughs> That's well, not that, but you, you'd be driving really fast, and then get in the car to go home, and then think you're still playing outrun and driving. Really <laughs> Shit, I'm going really fast. Yeah, so not a good story that really. It shouldn't be the odds. I feel like outrun always crops its head off in in yeah. these sorts of questions. Like everyone has really good memories of outrun. Well, it was so. If you think about it. Everybody, boys or girls, girls or boys, we, we all want to basically, you know, have the flash car driving, you know, on the California roads. It was quite an aspirational game. It had, it had you know, it was bright, colourful. Uh, it, back in those days, it was unusual to be able to drive fast into something. You know, you know the, it was one of the first games to sort of visually almost get across what you want. is that sense of speed and, and travel and see something new appear. And that one was about seeing something new over the horizon it was you know if i can be a bit better i can get a bit further before it's i get timed out and um yeah i used to play a lot a lot in the in the it'd be about 89 90 something like that in my pub the modern hops that was my go-to yeah. game and then the dreamcast day when the dreamcast days when dreamcast came out that one christmas it was it was, a, it was such an amazing array of games um uh, have you shipped anything on Dreamcast, Mark? No. I have. You have, have you? <laughs> uh, well, early days, um, Peter and I went out to Japan at, at the invite of Sega, early, early, early Dreamcast days, to kind of have a tour around the studio and, and around um, Tokyo and um, to try and... Uh, See if, if we would be interested in doing the Dreamcast. Well, let's get this right. I shipped something on the on Dreamcast and didn't go to Japan, and you didn't and did go to Japan. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Sounds you, like Mark take, had the better yeah, side of the stick then. Gallery. You know, you don't get taken to dinner, you see. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we now know your first memories of and your favorite mer- memories yeah. of Sega as a personal thing mm. what is your favorite thing about working with sega i guess it's you guys you two it's just uh well and ibs ibs is also and yeah ibs is, ibs is here and elliot's and here six yeah and elliot no i think <laughs> i think it's i don't know gary you, you say i think we've covered it a little bit i think it's yeah. just the fact that they're not they're not um a big bad wolf publisher and they 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 are pretty um open to to input from us and we are only a little team you know we're only 29 people and they value that they don't just treat us as a, a subset of the bigger studios like ca or si or relic or amplitude who are much bigger than us so our voice feels equally considered so that's to their credit. That's what I like about yeah, Sega. And I think the relationship between the studios is is really good as well, really healthy, as you kind of said before. It's kind of nice that you kind of, if you've got a problem, you know you can talk uh, about it because someone's probably faced it anyway. And um, and I think the whole studio at uh, in Brentford is is just a great bunch of people really I think it's, it's a nice bunch of people to work with and that is sounds a bit nebulous but it, it is important I think you've got to especially at Gary's age we've got to be yeah you know, I was going to say it's a very di- yeah. diverse publisher it, it signed a studio of, of the two founders who were in their 50s so that's that's quite diverse <laughs> yeah so we've had this year is all about Sega's 60th you oh, know, yeah. Sega's been around for 60 years. Where do you hope Sega is in another 60 years? I don't care. I'll be dead. <laughs> you know. I'm going to be 100 and... 100 and... Nearly 120, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, I, I guess, I guess it's, it'd be nice to think of um, uh, game studios uh, sort of evolving along with 
home entertainment and, and being able to sort of adapt to what is fun in, I, I can't even imagine what's going to happen in 60 years time, but probably getting it out of the house a bit more. I mean, that would be nice if entertainment can be, you know, not just in a dark room in the, you know, in, in some, you know, person cave in your house, making it as inclusive as possible, as in lots more people can share those experiences. I know that's happening, but still we're on headsets. We're in, we're looking at a screen. Mm. So seeing how entertainment technology rather than game technology can evolve to be more inclusive and feel less insular. I still, as a parent, you know, I, I'm, I'm slightly at odds with the fact that gaming can be fairly kind of, you know, insular. So we need to as developers think of ways of making people feel that it's just not such a, 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 a fun in isolation. I don't mean just with a headset on talking to somebody over Call of Duty. I'm on about how it can feel more integrated into real life. That's, I think, what games need to do. Otherwise, we're always going to be coming up against the negative press that gaming has. That, you know, what's going on? Why aren't, you know, why aren't people going out and getting more fresh air? Why aren't people being more kind of socially, you know, mature? So that's something I think games need to, to do as, as we evolve. But that seems a very serious answer. I apologise. Yeah, I guess sixty, another forty years, it'll be a hundred years old. So yeah. that's pretty amazing. I mean, being sixty years old is in antique, incredible. I mean, Gary's nearly sixty, and um, so. But I mean, I, I think Sega is quite a is always looking at itself and kind of looking at how it can do things better. So I think. If it keeps doing that and it is able to kind of uh, you know, grow the number of studios, more diverse stuff um, coming out, I think you know it'll be you know, an amazing place. But the, the world is is crazy, and um, who knows what's going to happen in yeah. six years. I think we've been pretty good at kind of evolving with the times. So yeah. in sixty years, I think hopefully we'll we'll be you know still at the forefront of all of the kinds of games that we're doing yeah you never know maybe we'll have like a real life two-point hospital in 60 years time you don't know. i'd like to go back to some more coin ops and, and go back into sort of arcades and make that more of a a place to be as well because that is a quite a bit more of a shared experience and, mm -hmm. and you know, sega were right at the, the cutting edge of that and they were the, they were you know founding father if you can use that term of you know coin up machines and they were always quite exciting and cool they just need to become in vogue again you know they're not really in vogue uh the, these places but um you know there's something cool about we, we experienced that in japan when we were out there um just recently last christmas um going into some of those sega arcade machines and some of these machines are just jaw-droppingly cool and, and I, you know, we haven't done that in, in the UK for years, you know, sort of going to some, well, I certainly haven't done it, but some of these machines were just awesome. Um, I'd like that to become a fashion again, that we build these wonderful arcade machines and watch people play and try and sort of improve on their score and that kind of thing, because, um, yeah, it is cool. Tech is cool, uh, but it can't always be in your living room, you know, Build big, something very big and cool in a big space is definitely an event I'd love to see happen again. Fair. You've touched on obviously arcades and Outrun and how big Outrun has been to both of you. Yeah. Would you say that that's your favourite Sega franchise or game, or do you have an actual favourite favourite Sega game? Crazy Taxi. Does that count as yeah, my favourite? Favorite? And, and why we're not doing Crazy Taxi right now, if someone in Sega can just kick that off, because it absolutely has to happen. That is that is my absolute favourite Sega game. Yeah, I, I would have to agree. It's, it's, it's a really fun game. Uh, is it a Sega franchise? Does Sega own that one? It's cool, yeah. I think they do. Think they do. Yeah. And I, one of the ones that's, that uh, I thought was really clever was you know, uh, typing of the dead, and that was that was one. And I keep talking about we should do a texting for the dead. You know, people are texting all the time, and we just do a version. Of that. Whenever I talk about typing of the dead, everyone goes, "Don't talk about typing of the dead." 
it's haunted. Mm. No. So I think I think I don't know why they say that, but they yeah, do. No one will say. Oh, don't talk about that. Um, yeah, so I think I think typing the dead was was really clever about tech, crazy taxi is just such fun, brilliant sort of party game. Yeah. So two point taxi rank, yeah. I've already asked. I wanted we have taxis turning up in two point anyway, and I just wanted a crazy taxi to turn up, and it's sort of like you know, pops over another car and does a three sixty and swings into the front, and people get out all dizzy. That well, we've done a bunch of stuff for the Sega sixty. I don't know if you guys have seen seen them. We've done a bunch of uh, things in the game that. Uh, they're just coming out to celebrate, yeah. Yeah, it was just cool. And one of the ones Gary was keen to get was, was the crazy taxi coming up and dropping patients off. Uh, but in fact, which which ones have we gone for, Gary? Yeah. Uh, we've got some. Uh, we've tried to cover more the sort of the life of Sega mm. sixty to, to to theme it. So we've got some really cool early grabber machines, which they were famous for in the uh, probably pre game days. So we've got a, a couple of those. We've got. Um, We've got the, the submarine game where the sort of, you know, telescope. Oh, periscope. Yeah, 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 that's that's right. Uh, we've got Outrun, of course. So you can play Outrun in okay. Two Point Hospital uh, if, when we get to the anniversary. Uh, we've got a bunch of cool things like, you know, we've got uh, Sonic rugs and things like that. Um, so, uh, yeah, we've got quite, oh, we've got the, um, the, the, Cyclops, uh, Mammoth, I forget the name from Space Harrier. Space Harrier, yeah, amazing. That's in there and it looks cool. It's really big as well. So it's a really impressive thing to put down. So we've done plenty of content. It's going to really make, you know, a big difference to the Sega fans that, that we've got this integration of Sega stuff in our game. By the time this video comes out, it will already be out in the wild. So mm. uh, Hopefully. And, you know, this is internal anyway. So we will... Yeah, that's fine. But um, yeah, it's, it's Part nice. Part of it's internal. All right. Okay. Well, I'll let you guys decide in the edit. You know, you can decide what we can and can't say. But we've been really pleased and proud to support the the anniversary by putting this content. This con content will live with the game forever. It's not going to come for a few weeks and then go away. People will be able to use this content. You know, put, um, imagine this. I mean, who would have thought we would have one day been able to put an outrun arcade game in, yeah. in a, a two-point I think, I mean, we've been keen from day one. In fact, we've got the Sonic um, arcade machine mm. in, in, when we released the game. And in fact, one of Gary's uh, ideas for an illness was was based around Dr. Robotnik, who's now Dr. Egg? Eggman. 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 Yeah, so, yeah. yeah so, uh, it was meant to be D Dr. Robotnik, and he was a robotic doctor who, oh my God. who basically would, would calm down the over-enthusiastic fans of Sonic uh, who were so like into cosplay they would just run around catching the magic you know imaginary rings that they got to play the, the early access beta of the next Sonic game which calmed them down so yeah. that was that was one of our original yeah. ideas we pitched. Yeah. Uh, Sonic Youth Illness we, we we didn't get them uh, approved, but so the, the, it was great with the 60th anniversary, you put a load of stuff in. And of course we've done stuff with uh, Sports Interactive and mm. CA and Amplitude. Uh, we've got sort of a whole, whole load of stuff from their games. And a little spoiler here, which may not be able to go into this, but it's another big anniversary uh, in February coming, which is going to be Sonic's 30th. Mm -hmm. And we've got some interesting content coming uh, to the game for that as well. That'll be exciting. But we'll have to talk about that another time. <laughs> well, I think I think that wonderfully wraps us up. It's been an absolute pleasure having both of you here. Thank you so much for your time. This has been Mark and Gary from Two Point Studios. Everyone, I've been Shah. Thank you for thank you for hanging out with us today, and we'll see you in our next. 60th anniversary content you can find it on social media or on our website so we'll see you soon bye, bye.